In 2004, I was writing a feature story on Zora Neale Hurston and the film adaptation of her novel, Their Eyes Are Watching God. I found out that she and Langston Hughes had been close friends and collaborators during the Harlem Renaissance, but that their friendship ended because of their dispute over the authorship of a play titled Mulebone. I also found that virtually every scholar who wrote about this treated it in the same way. Identical details, identical conclusions about what happened and why. This all rang very hollow to me. I got the sense that there was a lot more to the story than existing scholarship had covered. When I decided I would write this as my dissertation topic, what I asked was, by exploring Hurston's and Hughes's lives and literary work depth psychologically, what new information, what new insight, and what new understanding might be revealed about their lived experiences, about the dynamic of their relationship, and about their creative collaboration? This was the overarching question in my research. I used the theoretical lens of Jungian psychology in my approach for a couple reasons. In the spirit in man, art, and literature, Jung wrote, it is undeniable that the artist's personal psychology may occasionally be traced out in the roots and in the farthest ramifications of his work. Even with what Jung called introverted art, where the artist is very conscious of her choices in constructing the work, Jung considered that, quote, the poet thinks she knows what she's saying, but she actually says more than she is aware of. Langston Hughes essentially said the same thing. He wrote, quote, the poem reveals always the, poem, the poet as a person. Nobody can write a poem without revealing something of himself. In addition to that personal aspect, Jung also recognized the collective cultural function of an artist's work. Quote, it rises above the personal. It speaks from the mind and heart of the artist to the mind and heart of mankind. In short, Jungian theory supported my sense that, one, deeper psychological revelations were present in the text of Hurston's and Hughes's lives and writing, whether they realized it or not, and two, these revelations could speak to and be apprehended by anyone who would make the inquiry. The purpose is to understand the essence of a particular lived experience through the process of reconstructing the historical and the personal life situations, and that is what I did. To this end, I first looked closely at the key events in Hurston's and Hughes's lives from their respective childhoods up until just before they met in 1925 in order to ascertain the early development and sense of identity of each. Next, using the archetype of the brother-sister pair, Isis and Osiris, I examined Hurston's and Hughes's respective personal lives, their romantic relationships, and their relationship with each other from their initial meeting in 1925 through the beginning of their collaboration in 1930. I then examined Hurston's and Hughes's experiences in the broader cultural context of the Harlem Renaissance, specifically how their respective psyches interfaced with and were affected by the cultural psyche of that era. So it was not a history of the Harlem Renaissance, it was picking specific incidents and experiences that happened during that time to highlight the psychological action that was going on for Hurston and Hughes and for the culture at large. I considered the purpose and intent of the Harlem Renaissance, or New Negro Movement, the influence of white patrons, cultural circumstances and expectations of the time, and, and particular creative work by Hurston and Hughes produced at that time. Finally, I assessed Hurston's and Hughes's collaboration on and fallout over the play Mulebone from February 1930 to March 1931 in light of all the assessments I made in the preceding chapters. I concluded by considering signs of healing or attempts at healing their relationship by evaluating key pieces of literature written by Hurston and Hughes most immediately after the Mulebone fallout. For Hughes, that was his play Mulatto, and for Hurston, that was her novel, Their Eyes Are Watching God. I also considered the purpose and function of the two major cultural expressions that actually heal and reunite Hurston and Hughes, the New Ring Shout Cosmogram at the African Burial Ground, and the neighboring Washington, D.C. Uh, restaurants, Busboys and Poets, and Eatonville. And through these expressions, Hurston's and Hughes's art rises above the personal and speaks to the heart and mind of mankind. And as Hurston said, or wrote, I have learned to know that the thing we call misunderstanding, that blind bumping of one vessel against the other as we grope for nearness, is the greatest tragedy of humanity of all animate life. This cosmic blindness that prevents even the very near from being clearly seen. 
that is when it hurts the most. And as depth psychologist Edward Bynum wrote, we either love each other or die. It's just that simple and paradoxically just that difficult. Either we love each other or die. <laughs>